Yes, welcome to everybody uh, for this very exciting masterclass that we're running this afternoon. Um, if we look at the title of the masterclass, it's basically about supporting children's mental health, and it's using this amazing Ice Hearts Finland approach. Um, what is really interesting about this is it truly embodies um, everything that we're about in this particular conference, which is about, and if, if you can do the movements, please, it's about leveling up. Can everybody do them, please, just to wake up after lunch? It's about shaping up, and it's about powering up, if you remember those things. Excellent. So it is about all of that and giving those life chances to children who are a bit more vulnerable in society. It's about helping them to do that through movement, through sport, grassroots sport, and also about powering them up and giving them all of those opportunities through amazing mentoring. So I'm standing here today, my name is Fiona Chambers, and I'm from University College Cork. And our team in University College Cork is part of this amazing project, which has been funded by the European Commission, EU for Health, that particular funding uh, stream. And there are five pilot countries involved in this amazing initiative. And they are Denmark, Estonia, Italy, Slovenia, and Spain. So for the next two hours, I really want you to listen with your heart to what's going on. I know we were talking about ice hearts. I want you to listen with your heart. I want you to learn what this amazing initiative is about. And I also then want you to respond in the activities that we are going to engage in. So we're going to start off now by looking at a video in relation to those mentors which are literally at the heart of the Ice Hearts Finland program. So we're just going to watch that now. It's on its way, I'll do a movement break or something. <laughs> Moi Aleksi. Kiva, kun tulit meidän joukkueeseen. Mä tiedän, että se on jännittää vähän, eikä se haittaa. Meitä kaikkia on jännittänyt, kun me tultiin mukaan joukkueeseen. Meitä odottaa mahtava yhteinen matka ja seikkailu täynnä muistoja, joita me tehdään täällä joka päivä. Yksi, kaksi, kolme! Ensimmäisen kerran, kun mä tapasin mun ensimmäisiä Ice Hearts-tyttöjä, niin he oli esikoulussa. Nyt he on neljännellä luokalla ja mun matka jatkuu heidän rinnalla siihen asti, että he täyttävät 18, eli meillä on pitkä taiva vielä yhdessä kasvettavana ja minä kasvan tietysti heidän mukana siinä ja on lupautunut pysymään rinnalla heidän kanssa ja perheiden kanssa ja sitten tietty kaikessa, missä he mua tarvitsevat. Tämä on sitä parasta, millä saa helposti syntymään. Ice Hearts-toiminnassa tärkein tekijä on se, että kasvattaja säilyy. Kun lapsen ympärillä monet asiat muuttuu elämässä, perheissä ja kaikessa hänen arjessa niin kuin vuosien aikana, niin Ice Hearts-kasvattaja säilyy. Se on upea tunne, kun sä laitat viestintä ja hoitat. Silloin musta tuntuu, että mulla on joku rooli sun elämässä. Varmasti jokainen kasvattaja kiintyy noihin oman ryhmänsä lapsiin. Mäkin käytän paljon lausetta, että mun tytöt, niinhän mä sen koen. Mulle parasta on ne hetket, kun mä näen, että sä yrität, vaikka se on pelottaa. Rohkeutta on se, että tekee asioita, vaikka pelottaisi. Joskus tekisi mieli halata sua ja sanoa, että hei, asiat järjestyy aina, tavalla tai toisella. Sä et ehkä vielä ymmärrä sitä, mutta mä toivon, että jonain päivänä sitten. Kaikki muu sortuu voi ympäriltä, mutta aisikasvattajan käsi kestää. Kestää. Muistaaksä, kun mä sanoin kerhossa monta kertaa, 
Et mä harvoin lupaan mitään, mutta se minkä mä lupaan, mä myös pidän sen. Mulle yksi tärkeimmistä lupauksista on ollut se, että mä oon sun vierellä aina kun sä tarvit mua. Meillä on vielä yhteistä matkaa jäljellä ja se lupaus tulee pitämään. Loppuun asti. Sä oot tärkeä mulle, niin kuin kaikki muutkin joukkueen mojat. Hello, minä olen raissilainen. Tässä on raissiryhmä kokonaan. Tykkää videosta ja silaa kanava. Paras video, aissi paras video. Yeah, that's nice. So... Um, during this particular two hours, there's going to be a number of mentors from the University in Cork, University College Cork. Um, so there's myself, Nico Lorenzuti, and Sinead Moynihan. So you'll meet us as we move through. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hear from actual people who have been working in the Ice Hearts program in Finland over many, many years. And we're going to hear from different individuals and different perspectives. So again, I'm, I'm inviting you to listen with your heart to what they are saying to you. So the first person that's coming to the stage now is Kai Tarvainen, and I really hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Kai. Um, and Kai is going to talk about the 25-year journey that this particular award-winning project and program has been involved in. So welcome, Kai. Thank you, Fiona, and thank you for all to coming to listen to this Ice Hearts Masterclass with us. It's nice to see all and the new friends as well. And my name is Kai Tarvainen and I am from Ice Hearts Finland. And I'm here to give you a brief overview of Ice Hearts with these supporting questions that's, which are going to be answered throughout this session. First, the background of Ice Hearts. <clears throat> Ice Hearts was founded in 1996 and it was preceded uh, observations of the child care's child protection's abilities to take care and to increase the well-being of the children. It was also found out that these children usually lack a permanent and trusty adult presence in their lives and no, they did had a possibility that they didn't do uh, sports, or, sports or hobbies because plenty of the kids just they didn't have a possibility to participate on those. And from these starting points, the idea of ISAS was born and it is a, uh, it, its aim is to prevent, it was and it still is to prevent the social exclusion of the kids and the young people. And and first, ISATS was more like a social sports club, with a <coughs> provided long-term support for the kids in the form of a theme sport. But quite soon it was noticed that this is not enough for the kids and they, that they need also support in the other areas of their life. And gradually the ISATS was developed and it's a model of a holistic approach to the children and kids' well-being. And these are the key elements of the ISATS model. It's a comprehensiveness. Uh, there's a comprehensiveness way to see and to uh, increase the well-being of the children. And it means that the children's well-being is taken into account in their daily social environment and the key areas of ISAT's work are individual, family and school support and also there is a hobby and free time activities and support in networking with the stakeholders in, uh, stakeholders in children's lives. And in ISAT there's a formed groups or teams from the kids that are selected to the model and, and each team has a one mentor who provides support for the kids for 12 years 
from their age six to their age 18. And it's a social and emotional support, presents caring and a relationship of trust. And the work is done in child-oriented perspective. And it means that it's not fo focused on the weaknesses and challenges of the children, but the strength, the success, and the resources. And in that way, it's increased the agency of the children and, the, uh, and there it's try to build a fo positive image to themselves, of themselves and also of others. Sports and hobbies are an important part of the model and also important part of the assets activities as well. And it seems that it sets a frame for a commonality where the children can form bonds that also last outside the activities and support them as well to uh, increase the social inclusion and to get them have a sense of belonging. And who are the kids in Nice Hearts? Well, they are kids who come from different backgrounds. They are kids with learning problems, with immigrant backgrounds, and also kids who can't uh, participate on sports or hobbies due to their family's low income, for example. And the common for these kids is that they all are in the need of support. And there is a, as it turned out, there is a long history of ISATS. It can be said it's a successful model. And a, a, one important aspect of this success is that the model itself is flexible. And in ISATS, there is a readiness to constantly and reflexively de develop the model in dialogue with the research results. And it also can be said that, that the framework of the model has been on track from the early on, because according to the results from the social mentoring field, it is, have been found out that the uh, solid and successful uh, framework for social mentoring is created in terms of comprehensiveness, permanency of a mentor, and sufficiently frequent meetings between the mentor and the child. And also, the model is cost-effective. In the cost-effective calculation, it came out that uh, its team's net savings are about 3 million euros, and the savings arises from the changes in the children's needs in services. And here we can see some examples from the uh, research results from the ISAS longitudinal study, which is carried out by Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare Researchers. So uh, ISAS do reach the children that are targeted, and, and also it provides a trusty and a uh, community, meaningful community to children. And that was my part of the presentation of this master class. And I thank you for your interest. So um, thank you so much, Kai, for that insight. It's really helpful. Just to note that we're not going to ask any questions after each of our speakers at this beginning part of the master class, because you will have plenty of opportunities to do that as we move through this, uh, this time. So this is a really exciting moment. We're going to meet the founder of Ice Hearts, and that's Nelly, and I'm going to try not to ruin your surname, N Nelly Nimel. So Nelly, would you mind coming up to the podium, please, just to present, please? Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm really honored to be here. Okay, um, how can one mentor change a life of a many children? I have lots of girls in my team. They are all different individuals 
and the need of the support is different for each of them. I want to share a story about one of them. And from the slides, you can read the basic things concerning the work. This girl was timid and hated tasks. Uh, learning didn't go very well in the school. There were no friends and not really the skills to make them either. One day, the mother of the girl invited me to visit their home. We talked and I understood that the children were the most important thing in the world to the mother. But the mother had a difficult life. Life was poor and unhappy. It hadn't always been that way. At some point, there had been a divorce from the first marriage, then a new relationship, first a wonderful beginning, a baby and another, and then violence, drugs, and mental health problems. The mother had tried to keep herself and the children safe. Sometimes it didn't work very well. The police, child services, and a lot of authorities came into their life. The mother was desperate, the situation was difficult. Children felt the violence they saw and lived in a constant fear and anxiety. Mom had no one to talk to, no one who had a positive perspective on things. I got into the habit of visiting the mother for coffee now and then. She was unemployed at home. She had left her studies unfinished and soon the mother asked what I thought would she dare to study again? I encouraged her and told what good I see in her. She decided to try. On a weekly basis, I was with the girl in school. She loved to sit on my shoulders and looked like a little fairy. She didn't talk like a fairy though. And this was what we trained first. Fairies don't swear like pirates. She took part on afternoon activities the girl had many challenges in terms of health and cognitive skills. She had a lot of doctor and therapy appointments. I helped the mother with transportation. As an unemployed single parent, she didn't have the opportunity to take care all of, of all the necessary appointments. The girl often needed individual support teaching and I was able to give it with the teacher's consent. Little by little, the girl and the mother began to trust me. Little by little, the girl th girl's health improved and she started to study a little. And then the girl said that the father went to the prison. Apparently, there had been quite a lot of violent situations. We went to see dad together many times. It was easier for the mother when someone shared the unpleasant atmosphere and helped to answer the children's questions. It was important for the children to meet their father. A year passed and mother finished her studies. The girl was now in good physical shape and she went to school like any other children. She received, uh, received sufficient support at school and we exercised floorball together in the free time. Her mother went to work and the family situation got better in every way. The girl noticed that after practicing floorball, she had become a good player. At school, she needed help and support in everything else, but she was excellent in sports. At the tournaments, no one outside knew that she was a special support student. When she played, she was like everyone else. They used to be a family with a bunch of problems. Now they had become actors in their own lives, people who strive to move forward. I don't mean I did it all this. I certainly didn't. But I, as an ISAT mentor, was able to be the one who gave the mother and the girl a small window into the future. I believed that they themselves can be the change they want to see. I did it with small, simple actions, with a smile, listening and presence. I did it by showing the girl that she can play if she practices. She can study and learn if she practices. And she can have friends if she learns how to do that. Mother, on the other hand, gained, gained strength from the small coffee moments and the fact that she wasn't alone. 
Although I worked with this family for a long time, there was never much time spent at once. The first small window into the future opened already during the first months. This is what the mother has said afterwards. Even the first window can be enough and you don't need miracles to see it. A mentor is a coach who sees the good in the child and the family and increases it while doing sports. We have the mentor, the team, the family and the authorities and stakeholders. If we can make all of them work together, it's possible for one mentor to change the life of many children one at a time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nelly. Now, could I get everybody please to get up because you're sitting way too long. Okay, we're going to try this out. You know, you know the song YMCA? Yes, of course you do. We're going to change that a little bit. So we're going to try M, O, V, and I, the E is going to be weird. I have no idea. We'll try E. Okay, are we ready again? And can we sing along? So M, O, V, E to the tune of YMCA. Are you ready? M, O, V, E. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. We might start a trend. You never know. So, <laughs> oh dear. there you go. So, I have the absolute pleasure of introducing Peteri Latti. He is the head of the sports unit in the city of Pori. And he's going to talk about the community approach to Ice Hearts. And I'd like to invite Peteri to the stage now, please. Thank you. Mm, hi, everyone. It's great to be here. It's an honor to be here and share my experiences and uh, the experiences what we have in Pori about Ice Hearts action. First, quite a uh, long slide about my history, but I think this is quite important. Uh, important story about uh, my background, how I'm in, I, I have been il involved with uh, Ice Hearts during my, uh, my history. There's a few steps. First time I heard about Ice Hearts, I think it was something 2005, 6, 7, those years. But uh, in the beginning, I thought the Ice Hearts is only the sports clubs as usual. But year 2008, I learned more. Actually, there was one guy in the same course with me. It happened to be Nelly's husband. Uh, and uh, since that, I think I have understood a lot of more about Ice Hearts concept. Uh, after a few years, I was invited to act in a, in a local Ice Hearts uh, Lo local Ice Hearts Association, and I sp spent there five, six years, and that made my understanding about Ice Hearts concepts, concepts so much uh, deeper. Uh, I was about to start in this position where I'm uh, working at the moment. I was about to start uh, 2018, the end of, end of 2018, and Mayor I, I, I hasn't been started yet. I started in, in January 1st of, actually 2nd of January 2019. And the mayor phoned me and asked if I can join them to Ulvila. Uh, there will be the mayor and my to be four person there. And uh, we went to visit, visit uh, Ulvila's Ice Heart group. And that, I think that point was very important and actually crucial when uh, what, what comes to Ice Hearts, Ice Hearts action in Pori. Uh, that, of course, uh, those uh, mayor and my poor person, they knew about Ice Hearts beforehand, but that was the point we decided that we're going to start Ice Hearts action in Pori as well. 
So, and uh, I've been working for this uh, position at the moment, almost five years. And since that, Ice, Heart, Ice Hearts has been on my desk the whole five years. That's the background, what comes to uh, the Ice Heart, the history of Ice Heart groups uh, in Pori. Pori, briefly, it's a 10th biggest city in, in Finland. 250 kilometers up up north from from uh, Helsinki, the capital, and we have 80 83,000 citizens there. And uh, at the moment, we have four ice hot groups going on in in Pori. Uh, I will tell later about those why why those uh, groups are working in those places in a map. We will be there in in a couple of minutes. Okay, and then the next slide. Yes, there was a few questions uh, for me beforehand. Why why does community need ice hearts? And I think maybe the one of the main things is uh, the flexibility and commitment. That's something that uh, city organization can't can't provide those to those kids, and that's why it's very. Uh, th that's why that, that's something that Ice Hearts can can provide for for the the city organization, and I think that's the main main thing. Uh, and the, the long time long time commitment as well, twelve years. Yesterday we talk, talked about, and I said it's it's quite difficult situation to tell someone that you have to work for the city of Pori for twelve years, but when Ice Hearts is recruiting the mentor, there is an uh, expectation that he or she will stay there for 12 years, as we heard about in, in, in Nelly's presentation as well. Another one very important thing is this personal relationship. We heard a great story a couple of minutes ago, and that's something I'm quite sure that the city organization can't provide for the kid and the family. Well, the next question for me was, uh, why does community support Ice Hearts? I think those reasons I just told you are quite the same. The answers for this question is as well. But I think the, maybe the main, main thing is that it's not, it's not only about the money, even if there is a, the cost for society for the one, one kid, we can, Ice Hearts think a concept can kind of save. There is a price in, in, in euros, but uh, I think the most important thing is that uh, there is a price for, the, price for the human life. Kind of, I think it can be said like uh, that Ice Hearts is uh, promoting well-being and helping children, youth, and their families with everyday life, and they can provide the vis vision for the future and hope for this kid and family. Well, how to convince? I think there is a there is two things. Of course, there is uh, awareness. The more people know about Ice Hearts, the easier it is to convince. But, uh, and, and the results are, are uh, the important thing, but I think the story is much more. We heard Nelly's story, and I think we kind of bought it all who are here at the moment. And that's, I put on a slide, I put the sales pitch, but it's, the life is all about stories, I think. Couple of words about uh, what kind of not, uh, data is needed. Uh, we have this kind of uh, project going on. We have been using different data, and uh, from this data, we have created 100 types of the families with children. This uh, 
these circles here are one one type of family each, and uh, I I don't know pretty much of this how this is uh, created, but uh, we have an expert for that in in the city organization and. Uh, she has been doing great work with this this data. There is a sample, more than 9,000 families with children, and uh, she has been uh, combining very uh, different registers and creating this data. And if you have questions about this, you can contact me, and I can tell the name of this expert, Petrina. She will help you help you and ask answer your questions. And this data we use when we are uh, establishing these uh, ISAT groups in Pori in the future. So far we haven't been using this because this is kind of, uh, quite a new. We have had this data I think one, one year, but uh, the next, next time when we are trying to figure out which is the area where the ISAT group should be established, we use this data. And here's the background from this data. There is a few facts about why which area is, is what, what's behind this area, why 2019 the first group was based in the western parts of Pori and, and the second, second uh, group in, in, in the seaside parts of Pori. Um, this is quite important, I think, that uh, we can uh, kind of make the decisions based on the facts and data, and wh when we have the figures which support our decisions, then it's it's all, always easier to uh, to go and ask for more money and uh, for for the new groups. This is my short story about the uh, Ice Hearts action in Pori, and it's great to be here. Hopefully, hopefully you got something new ideas from this. This is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Petteri. And, and again, some beautiful insights there again, and data-driven insights. One word that struck me as you were talking was the word hope and the variety of types of families, over 100 different types of families that, that you're dealing with in this program. So I have a great pleasure in introducing a teacher that is involved in uh, the Ice Hearts program, and Rika Heinzman, um, I, I had the great fortune, and we had the great fortune of visiting the school in which Rika works. And it's, it's quite uh, phenomenal, the work she does as a teacher as part of this program. So please, Rika, come to the stage. Yeah. Thank you, Fiona, and good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are still awake. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really honored to be here. You know, this doesn't happen in everyday life of a teacher. Actually, never. Without students or parents. I have traveled, but always with them. And that's another story, you know. So, I am a teacher. I have been for 29 years. I studied as a music teacher. I did that in secondary school for 25 years. And I have worked, after that, I have worked as a consultative teacher, and now I have a little group of uh, so-called drop-out students, students who have um, different kind of problems that prevent them to come to school. So my classroom is quite empty every now and then, but sometimes it's even full, yes. And the reason I tell you about these different uh, parts of my career is because I have, uh, throughout the, all these parts, I have worked with ice hearts, but in different forms. Um, I was asked to tell my story and why I think that ice hearts also benefits teachers, headmasters, class helpers, and the whole school. Why does ice hearts work at school? Are there challenges or barriers? How we plan days and lessons? How do other kids react to the presence of a mentor in a classroom? I won't talk about the figures or the numbers or the statistics. They are, of course, very important too, but I will tell you why I believe in ice hearts. And I have 
I have truly seen no other system, no other system that supports the work of a teacher as Ice Hearts does. So, why at school? Why not? The child spends a lot of time at school, and the smaller children also often in after school care. I think it is just natural uh, to work at school to give a holistic overall support. In Finland, school is quite open. The activity aims to be transparent, so there are no reasons to say no thanks when someone offers help. I think it would also be a bit stupid to say no thanks when we daily face problematic situations at school. Let's take an ordinary day in my classroom when I worked as a music teacher. In my classroom, we made music, we sang, we played in a band and so on, because I don't believe in studying music on a paper or having tests. So, uh, but my way to teach itself, it gave, gave, gave child a challenge. No chance to hide behind the paper or the notes, but to be active member of a group in a classroom. Classes coming in and out, I had about 250 students every week. I taught only music. So that is a situation where you have absolutely no chance to get to know the student properly, nor to know if they have something going on in their lives that affects their behavior, their concentration, or the mood. I actually think that I have been a teacher of the girl that Nelly was talking about, but I have no knowledge who she is. And that's a different being a teacher and being a mentor. And these things happening in child's life, they are not minor. One can imagine how it feels if at home you have abuse or violence or drug or alcohol problems or fear of parents who are not able to take care of you or no connection with the culture you are living in. And then act normally actively and give your best at school. It doesn't happen. But the mentor knew about these things going on in child's life. We never planned anything. You don't need to plan anything. I was still the teacher. Sometimes we had a brief discussion outside the classroom, like there has been some happening last night or there are some challenges at the moment type of talk. But usually mentor just entered the classroom and I was able to be sure that the lesson would be better. And why? If there was a problem during the lesson, I could have been so sure that the mentor would calm the child or take the child out of the classroom, or help to build a certain atmosphere that usually was far more relaxed than I could offer as a teacher, because I had to teach. And usually nothing happened. And when these good moments happen regularly, they grow. It's a constant circle. The presence of a mentor in a classroom, in my opinion, and also in my experience, firstly, gives the child a feeling that I am looked after. There is someone for me no matter what. And I am so important that my mentor also comes to school with me. Secondly, it gives a child a possibility to avoid the situation where he or she fails. And thirdly, it impacts the whole group. To have in a classroom more adults, and in this case, these extremely lovely persons. And for me as a teacher, it gave something otherwise unreachable. I simply could not have handled these problematic situations alone. I learned a lot. It gave me a model on how to face the child uh, with dignity and respect, and not to think as a teacher who tries to pour knowledge into a head that is not ready to receive it at the moment. And it taught me to see all children also as equals, not as learners. And to understand that the best you can do at the particular moment looks different every day. And sometimes it is an effort and enough just to breathe without a fear of failure. And I don't really see any barriers or challenges, only opportunities. 
I have seen how little ones with no social skills grow up to be the most considerate and empathic grown-ups. I have seen them working as a part of ISART's organization, late. I have seen the impact with the students I suggested to join Jarmo's team. At the time we worked together, uh, when I was a consulting teacher. And I have seen how ISART becomes a natural part of school when we arrange concerts together with my students to raise money for sports equipment and, and activities. And every student had an equal role, equally important to make these events successful. Um, to close the circle, I would, I would like to share one statistical detail. None of my current dropout students is an ice heart child. None. Not last year and not the year before that. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Rika. So I want to thank the four, um, the four Ice Hearts, um, I would say, th those people who run and are part of the Ice Hearts initiative. So we heard from Kai, from Nelly, from Piteri, and from Rika. So a, a round of applause for them again, please. Thank you so much. Um, so what we're going to do now, it's going to be an, uh, an interesting segue. I explained at the very outset of this session that we are trying to learn from this program. Hence, you heard all of the different angles, from the founder to the person who's actually working in, in management and mentoring, to the person who's actually supplying the data and involved in the community, to the teacher. So we, as this project, this European project, are trying to really figure this thing out. And as I said to you, we have five pilot countries. So we have the great fortune of having them all, all the pilot countries are actually here at this MOVE Congress. We're going to hear from two of them now. So I'm going to invite Nico Lorenzuti to the stage, please, because Nico, part of our team, is going to interview. And we have two, um, two of our pilot countries here. So WISP from Italy, so Daniela Conti, would you mind coming to the stage, please? And also Alfonso Cavallos. So I hope I'm pronouncing your names correctly. I apologize if I'm not. But we're delighted to have you here, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say about your experience in piloting or beginning to pilot this amazing initiative. So, off we go. Thank you. Check. Thank you, Fiona. Um, my name is Nico, and as you know, this is Daniela, and it's uh, Alfonso. So, uh, as you've all heard, uh, Ice Hearts is a phenomenally inspiring organization, uh, capable of empowering and creating an incredibly positive difference in the life of a small children. Now, these two lovely people here are rolling out Ice Hearts in their own countries. So, a couple of questions for you. Daniela, I'll start with you. Okay. Why did you decide to pilot Ice Hearts in Italy? So, thanks a lot to everybody to be here. Um, as WISP, as the Italian Sport for All Association, we got a very long experience in working with people, vulnerable uh, young people or in area of disadvantage, but only in sport. So Ice Arts is a, a long path, we see, and it's a complete one. So we are very interested in uh, exploiting this kind of methodology and to try to report in our country with all the difference that we got. Uh, of course, also even in terms of inhabitants or schools. So beautiful your schools. Our in Italy are not so. But uh, th th that is the, the goal. Excellent. Alfonso, same question for you. Why did you decide to pilot Ice Hearts in Spain? Yeah, um, thank you uh, everyone for being here. It's really um, a pleasure as well uh, to take part in this. We chose it because I'm, I'm from Football Mass. We use play and sports as a tool. Uh, to promote well-being of children in social sports sessions. And when the concept of Ice Hearts came up, we were very inspired about the holistic approach that it has with the mentorship. And it really resonated on what we were doing already. Uh, we do the social sport programs, and in Ice Hearts, sport is a fundamental part. So we thought that maybe it's very complementary to the activities that we're doing. And it can be also inspiring, especially in the context of Spain, in which most of the things that the teachers and, and the experts have said just uh, here <laughs> don't happen on a day-to-day -day basis usually, so yeah. Excellent, thank you. 
Second question. So the goal of Ice Hearts is to give vulnerable children a normal life, a life, a life like most of their peers have. How will Ice Hearts help you create activities for these vulnerable children and help you support them to have that normal life? Well, thanks a lot. Uh, we First thing, we try to um, learn how to pass the competence of a proper mentor to our sport educators. Because we saw that the, the role of mentor is so much important for your project and uh, we want to take some of the competence in, uh, in our um, association. Second one is the importance of the network. We want to uh, really realize community projects uh, um, having an educating community, helping these children, because we we saw in your experience how much important it is that everybody work together with this child. Uh, in general, we can say children, uh, not disadvantage, not anything, to help them to become adults and to learn how to have a very long-term support project. That's very important to realize a real positive eff effect. Thank you. Alfonso, same question for you. How will IceHearts support you? So, well, IceHearts is going to support us um, in different ways, I guess. Uh, for the children to have uh, this mentorship su support, uh, not only in one part of their lives, but in a more comprehensive way, as I said before. And on a community basis as well, engaging with different actors in the community. So there's the school, there's the families, then there's also the municipality. And all of these elements can be connected through these uh, people. Uh, and when we learned about the concept in, in Finland, and that was, you know, that was a, a very amazing experience and very enriching, that's something that we could feel in the air that it was happening. And we want to channel that through the communities in Spain as well. And obviously to reach out to children that they have that mentorship and to try and keep it for you know the long term which is the vision that you had that you had and that you're making possible now in finland fantastic thank you very much you will all have the opportunity to talk with uh, daniela and alfonso in the next section of our uh, program uh, but right now fiona back over to you thank you very much thank you thank you. thank you so much nico that's fantastic so what i was going to ask before you sit down alfonso and daniela i need the six of, of those people who have given us some fantastic insights just now for this section to come back on stage please so kai and nelly and piteri and rika and alfonso and daniela would you mind coming to the stage please saska is going to give you a small gift to thank you so much for all of your insights so thank you <laughs> oh. mm. Thank you. Thank you so much for those insights. So now we are going to uh, engage, engage as groups with the people that you've heard from uh, just now in this segment. So we're going to have something called a World Cafe. Mm -hmm. And my colleague Sinead Moynihan is going to lead this section of, of this masterclass. Uh, there's going to be a bit of furniture moving involved, I'm afraid. <laughs> but um, just engage with uh, Sinead, and she's going to um, lead this particular part of the session. So over to you, Sinead. Thanks, Anna. All right. I wish I had coffee for everybody, but I don't. Sorry. So I'm Sinead, and I'm delighted to lead the World Cafe methodology. So what is that? So it is a methodology to help you to explore and learn. So you guys have been a great audience, plenty of listening, a lot of interesting perspectives from different uh, speakers here today. And now it's your opportunity to ask some burning questions. So before we get to the burning questions part, imagine 
What does it feel like when you're in your favorite cafe? We often have our best conversations, our greatest insights, some nuggets of wisdom, our thought may pop in in that moment. So that is the atmosphere that we're trying to create with our World Cafe methodology. All with the umbrella aim to learn more about the wonderful Ice Hearts approach.